Hey, guess what? The level one KVMs are back in stock. Display port. Uh, they're not a perfect KVM, but they're pretty much the best KVMs that you can get. Now, uh, we've been, I can't believe it's been over a year since we've sort of debuted these. We helped work out the problems with the firmware so that things work a little bit better with higher end peripherals. So we've got USB 3. Competing KVMs only have USB 1.1, which is not great. So we've got a mix of HID ports and USB 3 ports because depending on what kind of keyboard you have, like if you've got one of the fancy super high-end Corsair keyboards, well, it's not really a HID keyboard. It's a proprietary peripheral. So you'll want to use the USB 3 ports for that. It's been an interesting time. There's lots of people on our forum that have shared their experiences with the level one KVM. It's 99.5% positive. The places where we've had the most problem have been devices that have a USB-C interface. And so this is not a video to announce the restocking of the one and two monitor KVMs that are DisplayPort, DisplayPort 1.2A, so you get FreeSync and G-Sync pass-through, although I can't say that you have G-Sync pass-through, but FreeSync pass-through works pretty much all the time. Most of the support on those have been down to bad or dodgy DisplayPort cables. Seriously, it's like sort of nuts. Like you go on Amazon, you order a DisplayPort cable, and it doesn't work, and it's like, well, I have two DisplayPort cables that work independently, but when I plug both of them into the KVM, it doesn't work. The KVM doesn't have a repeater, so if you've got two six-foot cables that pass through the KVM, it is like as if you have one 12-foot cable. And while one six-foot cable might work, one 12-foot cable will not because repeater. So use good quality cables and you'll, you'll be fine. There's two new models though, which is the reason for making this video. We've got HDMI that supports 60 hertz uh, 4K, 3840 by 2160. Now HDMI is slightly, slightly less bandwidth than DisplayPort 1.2. So we did the best that we could, but it's HDMI and it's HDMI 2.0 and that's what I've been using on my workbench for all the videos and monitor switching and stuff like that. So if you have DisplayPort, like if you have a mix of devices and some are HDMI only and some are DisplayPort and HDMI, I've been using the Club 3D DisplayPort to HDMI adapter for the devices that are HDMI, but if you want an HDMI KVM that does 4K with all the accoutrement, including USB 3 and all the lessons learned from the DisplayPort, KVM, we have that on the level one store. But the one that I'm most excited about is USB-C. USB-C, USB-C is a giant pain in the butt. If you bought you know, the level one DisplayPort KVM, USB-C to DisplayPort, you probably haven't had the best experience. Now, it works great with a Thunderbolt dock, but it doesn't work great on USB-C. And USB-C is also sort of weird. So like this cable is just a USB-C to USB-C cable. It's not gonna work for carrying DisplayPort signals, but it will work for the USB connection, so it's really weird. I've just been using Thunderbolt cables, so all the prototyping and stuff has basically been with Thunderbolt cables, and it works. So with the, the MacBook Pro USB-C Thunderbolt connection pass through, it's DisplayPort out, out of the KVM. So USB-C into the KVM, DisplayPort out of the KVM to a display with a Mac, works great. Now one quick note on USB-C cables. So like this cable, might look like USB-C on both ends, it's actually crap. Um, Thunderbolt cables are probably what you should use, even though it's not Thunderbolt, yeah, I know. Uh, that's because the only thing that will travel over this cable is USB 2, not even USB 3. So not all USB-C cables are made the same way. Be sure to use good quality cables. Thunderbolt cables, although there are some Thunderbolt cables that are problematic. So if you get one and the display is like cutting out or weird and black, try using a shorter cable. Remember I recommend no more than four meters between the display device, the computer, and the actual display. So the KVM's gotta be somewhere, you know, under four meters. That's pretty much true for everything. So USB-C interfaces, especially on like Mac laptops, sometimes was fine, sometimes was problematic. And so we've got that running now with the USB-C KVM. Now this KVM is a little different. It's only two USB-C ports. So if we look at the interface, it is USB 3 because DisplayPort can carry, or uh, USB-C can carry uh, USB as well as the DisplayPort connection. It's not Thunderbolt and it's not power delivery. It's just a KVM and it's just a two port KVM. Good news though, if you bought a level one DisplayPort KVM, you can daisy chain them. So I've got port four set up on or I'm sorry, port one. I've got port one set up on my desktop here so that it's plugged into the KVM. And then I've got the one and two port here. So you can run a laptop, like I've got a MacBook Pro here that's using the USB-C DisplayPort interface, and it's connecting just fine to our 4K 
you know, monitor from Korea. And the, the monitors from Korea are a little bit more problematic to get working with DisplayPort and all of the really long cables and all that sort of stuff than normal monitors. Most normal monitors are fine. So I feel like if this daisy chain thing works, then you're gonna have a little bit easier time. Basically the, uh, the USB-C goes into the USB-C KVM and then the output of the USB-C KVM goes to input number four on the, on the traditional uh, KVM and then it goes out from there. Now you will still have to plug your laptop into USB-C for power delivery. So you plug in, you know, your, your Dell cable. I've also got the, the 15 inch Dell XPS with a Thunderbolt. That also works great. And this one is the one with, uh, with Vega. So this is Intel plus Vega, which is one of the more problematic SKUs to get working with the, uh, the pass through. The Intel iGPU with the USB-C generally has been fine, even with adapters, even on the old KVM. So there you go. Two new models. The two new models are for pre-order. So uh, we're gonna take pre-orders for about two weeks and then I'm gonna enter the order. So we're looking at about an eight week delivery from uh, April 15th. So April 15th plus two months is when we would start getting in the HDMI or the USB-C KVM. So if you want, you can pre-order them. And I know about how many to order. I'm gonna, obviously I'm gonna order more than people pre-order, but not a lot more. And the KVM for DisplayPort, those are back in stock. You can order those and those are shipping now. So if you want a DisplayPort KVM, go ahead and order it. If you think maybe you need some USB-C ports, well, you can use the USB-C KVM with the DisplayPort KVM. That's totally fine. Or if you just have a couple of machines, you can use the USB-C KVM and that's also totally fine. The USB-C KVM also has audio, although the audio pass-throughs through USB, so it's kind of weird. I would not count on it to work. We did the best that we could with that. It didn't really cost any extra to run the lines for that, but you're gonna want a USB DAC, really, for the highest audio quality, if we're being honest with ourselves. But the combination of USB 2 and USB 3 ports gives you more flexibility than you have on most other KVMs. So I'm hoping that it will be pretty good. I think the uh, DisplayPort KVM turned out to be sort of best in class. Again, not perfect, doesn't work in every scenario, but it's pretty darn good. And a lot of people have said it's basically the best KVM that they've used. So at least for high-end peripherals and supporting 4K 60 Hertz. So yay, level one. All right, that's enough rambling for me. This is level one. I'm gonna go hang out in the forums. If you pick one up and you have stories you, stories you wanna share, even if you just wanna create something on the forum to be like, I bought a KVM and it works great. Much appreciated. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. I'll see you in the level one forums. Thank you.